This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so last class we were discussing on the additional security feature, which is multi factor authentication, which will enhance the security of the AWS account, right? So, multi factor authentication is a way where you install a Google Authenticator on your mobile phone and you will enter the OTP along with your email ID and password. Right. And we also discussed that we should not use the root account. Going forward, you should always use the what account? So, if you are using also, you should enable the multi factor authentication. And you should always log in with the other IAM users you have created. Like last class, we created these six IAM users. So you can use any one of these users. Right. And let us continue with how you can delete the users. So to delete the users, you can just simply select all these things. Right. And you can click on delete and confirm the deletion. So this will delete the users and similarly you can delete the group also so you can delete the groups just select the groups and type delete and it's a deleted and you know now uh, know about what is meant by policy there will be three components in a policy right that is ear effect action and resource effect is allow or deny and action means what kind of action like only read or write okay so this kind of will be listed in the action section and <clears throat> effect means you can either allow or deny and resource for what kind of resource like only on EC2 instance or only on S3 bucket. So various way. So today we are going to see that. Okay. So to, today we are going to create a custom policy for one our problem statement. The problem statement is let me explain you the problem statement. Now the problem statement is we have an EC2 here. Okay. Which we have created and there is an application we have installed on the EC2 right and that ec2 instance is writing lot of log files so let me write that ec2 again so that yeah this is that ec2 instance and we have installed an application there okay so this is an application and this application writing logs okay writes log files continuously okay continuously so due to this what is the action now what is happening due to this the ebs volume right so think that volume so let me write the volume here or ebs yeah so this is the volume now this volume is getting filled up Okay, so suppose this is 100 GB. So this is frequently getting filled up. So and the application. So you cannot keep on adding because this disk is costly. So what is this disk? This disk is, it is similar to our C drive. Okay, where you can see I have the made three partitions. So as you can see 200 GB free of 450 GB, right? So same case, if the application keeps on writing the data, then it is of no use, right? So in this way, what it will do, it will continuously write the log files and the disk will become full. So unnecessarily, it is a cost. You cannot, if you keep on adding also, it will increase from 100 to 200, 200 to 400, 400 to 800, 800 to 1000, so 1.2 TB. So like that it will keep on increasing. So what is the solution then? So the first solution is you can delete it. So the solution number one is delete. Let me write first. So solutions. Number one, delete files. But 
you cannot delete all the files at least you need to keep seven days or 30 days log files for the in every organization that is the story so in every organization they will ask you to maintain at least 30 days log file but, but if you maintain 30 days it will be a huge space then what is the another option move the files so this is the move the files to cheaper storage solutions cheaper storage solutions right like s3 bucket right so s what is s3 bucket s3 bucket is just like uh, this tool which tool my google drive here i am just uploading whether a file or a folder i am just uploading as a, some dustbin the job is to just upload and it will get upload and you can retrieve it via url same is s3 bucket okay s3 bucket is the simple storage service that is the abbreviation but in the back end it is going to upload our data or put our data in the cheapest disks so that is the reason that service is cheaper okay so now that is the second solution so first solution is not feasible for our architecture because we need to keep 30 days log files then let's let us bring the s3 bucket so you can take any one out of this okay yeah i am going to take this okay now i am going to from here the solution says simply move it okay now this is simple s3 bucket it is a very good features what are those features it is OBS that is object based storage. Object based storage. In the sense, there is no file system required. You can upload any type of data here as an object. Like you throw uh, any any items in a bucket, right? You can like uh, you can throw your pencils, pens, books.
Saivar or view. We are not able to hear you right. Hello? Yes. Now we can. Is it audible now? Yes. Who oh, actually audible. muted me? I don't know. No, it is audible, Mithun. Okay, from when uh, you lost? When? From beginning. From, from beginning. Basic. From OBS. Actually, I don't know who story. actually muted it. I don't know. At least you should have told him, no? I texted in group also, Mithun. Where in the group? I know. At least you should tell in the year itself. No, I I cannot be seeing WhatsApp right while I am teaching. Okay. Okay. At least if, if you have shouted, no, simply I was shouting and nobody is hearing. It is waste of time, right? I I called you also, sir. I think uh, you couldn't pick up. No, at least you should shout here itself. I'll be, you know, kept. I'll no, keep. No, uh, some... Okay, someone, and someone said some... it actually. No, someone actually have muted me. I don't know who was that. Because in between, uh, I didn't notice. Okay, anyhow. Okay, from where I had to start now again? Uh, I think uh, from the uh, OBS. No, not OBS. This is EBS. No, no. Uh, from object, object based uh, storage. Based storage. Okay, here from S3 bucket. Yes. So this point is clear where the application is writing the logs to the EBS volume. This is clear. Uh, no, Mithun, uh, no, Mithun, can you please start it from the beginning? Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay, so I'll start from the scratch. Right, so what we'll have is in any organization, so we have like VPC and other things, but what we, you know, set up inside the VPC is the application, right? And the, at that application will be hosted on the EC2 instances. Okay, so that same thing I have drawn here. So this is the EC2 instance. So this EC2 instance will have a obviously EBS volume. So this EBS volume is similar to our disks, right? 
so some portions will be you know will be using it will automatically get filled whenever we are adding files or we are writing something it will get automatically filled okay so same thing happens with our application also so the application write the log files continuously okay because our application you know needs to be up and running 24 bar 7 so it will be writing the files whenever the you know until the application is continuously running so this even though this is 100 gb this will get filled in one hour or one day right so it is not a good practice to keep on adding the space again and again okay so you can increase from 100 to 200 200 to 400 up to uh, 2000 gb also it will it is of no use you will simply paying the aws but as a aws cloud engineer you should also think of saving cost so how to do that you need so you can save cost having these solutions so what are the solution the solution number one is simply delete the files so for example now i have 200 gb now i i can simply delete all the files i'll go inside i'll delete all the files but these files are required for some, for my operating system to perform right or there might be some log files which are very very important for the application uh, debugging or any uh, you know auditing purpose so i cannot the first option is not feasible so the second option is move the files to the cheaper storage solutions in aws so in the aws s3 is the cheapest storage solution when compared to ebs volume okay so this is ebs actually elastic block storage which is ebs so this is costlier than s3 so the best solution is to save cost is move the files to s3 bucket because s3 stands for simple storage service and it is based on obs that is object based storage why because everything you put into this s3 bucket is simply considered as a uh, objects meaning it has no requirement to create any file systems for example you might have you, uh, you know you might be using this uh, google drive so here you, whatever you upload it will not be you know having any size whether you create anything or any directory for that matter there is no need to mention the size but while with respect to adding the ebs volume you must specify the size you're getting the point so that is the reason this s3 bucket is the cheapest option available and you can move the files but there is a catch here by default no ec2 instance can move the files which are stored in the ebs volumes or which are stored in the ec2 instance to the s3 bucket because by default no resources can talk to each other by default okay so we need something known as a iam roles so iam roles are this symbol as you can see i am role we will create with the custom policy so that the aws ec2 instance will get the permission so we can remove this section and we can move the files you're getting the point so we can move the files from s3 bucket so think that these are the files so we can the files are present here so you can move it easily to s3 bucket so you are saving the cost also and you are saving the files also okay so after 30 days you can delete from s3 bucket so of course there is a separate module is there in s3 we will explore that option but now let us stick to the this so how you can create so first for this you have to create ac2 instance okay and you have to create some dummy logs files okay and then you have to create a s3 bucket and then you can move you will try to move the files from s3 to uh, sorry ec2 to s3 so let us go to the first step so first create the aws ec2 instance so for that i am going to the aws management console and i have already created a ec2 machine here 
so as you can see this i have already created and this is the ip address so i have already logged in okay getting the point and this is the command to check the ip address which is same as i have copied see so both are same okay now first thing is let me create some dummy files okay so to create dummy files what i will do touch app that one dot dot hundred dot log okay so this is the command to create hundred files in one go okay hundred files in one go so after this if i do ls you can see there are so earlier there was no files now there are some application files here now i'll create some more files by the extension xml some more files by the name uh, dot httpd and some more by the name uh, logger so we have so many files now so these are application files so app 35 app 36 so these are some of the files okay now this as per the solution this is ready now i need this bucket to be created so in for in order to create the bucket you need to go to s3 bucket search for s3 in this and you will be taken to the here and you can create the bucket name here so create bucket and name i am giving as logs dash my app dash 2022 why i am giving this name because this name should be you know unique globally as you can see whenever you come to s3 aws console it says it is a global entity meaning you don't need to go switch the region all the region buckets will be listed here i will show you in some time but why still why they have given option for region is some companies will have a restriction that their data should be in their country only like for india so we will mention in that case you can mention india but for uh, ec2 instance is in northern virginia so i'm going to select northern virginia itself so there is no need okay and just keep all the other option as it is i've just given a name and then click on create bucket okay so once you have created a bucket it will be displayed here so as you can see logs my app 2022 as you can see the region and the, so there is no mention of size here even if you go inside the bucket there is no size the size will get populated only if you keep on adding the objects okay so now coming back to the solution i have this ready i have this ready now i need to try to push the log files now which is here so now the files are here in this volume now i'll try to push okay now see here so for this i'll try to write on screen uh, for loop so for i in okay so this is a button below the escape button okay you have to write this for i in ls do aws okay first let us see you need to install aws s3 okay yeah so aws s3 you have to install by because i have taken a ubuntu machine so you need to install the aws cli in order to interact with the what a resources because if you see without installation if i try to run it will say nothing it is saying command aws was not found so it has to be installed so that is the reason i will install the aws cli so i am going to use this package type y for s so it is installed
okay so now if i run aws s3 ls so it now i am getting another error what is this it says unable to locate credential you can configure credential by aws configure so it is not able now it is trying to connect from this i installed cli now it is trying to connect get the details of the s3 bucket but it is not getting so what to do so i need to create the iam role here so before creating the iam role i need to create the custom policy to be attached to the iam role so let us go to aws management console again so let me go to iam and click on roles so create a role and select aws service use case select uc2 and click on next okay and create a policy okay so choose a service so which one s3 right so select s3 okay what do you want in s3 so just you want to push the logs right isn't it so for now you can take it as list read and write okay isn't it and uh, or else what you can do you can give all the permission okay just check here and you can select all resources and go to the tags okay and then you can name it as ec2 to s3 log logs okay and you can copy paste the same thing in the and create a policy right so this policy has been created and you can select this and go to next yeah so you can refresh here and search for the policy yeah you can you have created and you can click on next and role you, you can uh, give the same thing ec2 to s3 logs dash role and you can create role okay so that's it now you have created this role coming back to this uh, diagram here but you need to attach this to the ec2 instance so how you are going to attach so go back to the aws console <laughs> search for ec2 select the instance go to actions go to security click on modify iam role choose the iam role so ec2 to s3 logs role which we created and update so once you update it so i was getting the error right unable to uh, you know get the credential so now i am getting some output okay so now i am going to push the logs which was which i tried using the for loop so for i in ls do aws s3 move dollar i okay and done now before i run this command just for the last time you can see the bucket which is empty which was the bucket name so logs dash my app 2022 so this is so this is empty now let me show you i'll start running just a second what will happen okay i need to give the this bucket url so which is copy this and s3 colon forward slash forward slash and the bucket name that's it so it will start pushing the logs 
So as you can see, now it is moving the logs to S3 bucket and if you just refresh, it will be displayed here. Getting? So now we have uh, 17 objects. Now if you refresh, there will be 37. So it will be keep on going. So these things are based on the roles. Now see, again I will remove that role. Okay. So select the instance, go to actions, security, modify AM role and from EC2 to no AM role, select it and then type detach. Now it will say failed, see, failed, 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 okay. So these are very, very attend, these things will take an instant. Is this clear? Any doubts? Uh, so, same thing you can go back. Excuse me. Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, we now have detached that IAM role, no, sir. Yes. Uh, without attaching that IAM roles to this EC2, can't we move these files to? S3 buckets? No. No. Yeah, that's what I explained, right? So by default, no resources can talk to each other. That's what so I'm getting failed. Because I just detached that role. Now you again, if I attach it, it will start working. See, going to the action section, go to security, modify AM role, choose the AM role, this one, and update. See, now it is start moving. So without the role, it will not have permission to push the logs to S3 bucket. So as per the diagram, by attaching the role, what you have done, you have removed this restriction which was there. Okay, so this restriction was there, no? we removed by attaching this role to the EC2 instance. So that is why the it, it, it has this cap. It means it is having some role. Role in the sense, it will play the role, it will assume that role while executing some of the commands. Clear? Yes sir, thank you. Yeah, so this was, yeah, as you can see, earlier it was 42. Now it will be 197 objects. So it will be keep on populating. Mithun, for if we are not creating S3 buckets, so the default location will be in EBC only? Yes, it will be in the default EBC only. So the location is this. EBS, not EBC, EBS I think, yeah. So, uh, what about the commands you gave in, uh, how to remember that method? By practice. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I will share these uh, commands. Okay, clear? Okay, so now there is one more last thing with respect to the roles. So roles is not only for this, uh, this type of uh, communication, like from EC2 to S3, that is, but obviously that is valid. But sometimes if somebody else, there is a user A, okay, if he wants to access your account, for example, now you all of you have your own AWS accounts. Now, if you want to give me access, so how will you give? 
come and tell me how will you give access to your aws account certainly you cannot give me your user id and password so the first option is you will create your user i mean my username and password so that is unnecessarily a headache for you so there is another option which we use in organization so you can give access to my aws account to audit your aws account using roles so i can switch role okay so similarly let me show you that it requires two aws account to do that but you can i will tell you i will guide you you can practice among yourself so what you have to do first go to the iam and click on roles select click create role and you have to select the second option aws account and you have to give the another aws account id so if somebody account number if you give here and if you select require mfa then they will access only if there is a mfa token and you will give some id like this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 like this and click next so it will it requires 12 digits so it says invalid so let me So I'll delete one more. So that is a 12 digit account ID. Okay. So again, you can give access. Now what he can do after attaching this policy, the same thing. You can attach the same S3 logs. So you will be able to see only S3 related activity. So this you can probably i will give it as a assignment so i i will give you the link also just a second and i'll give this commands for you to practice okay this three touch iphone c eight minus so i'm going to give this commands for you to practice see if you practice well you can become master in aws okay and anyhow you have this link with you so you can go through the diagrams whenever you feel stuck okay right and uh, i'll give you the link i am roll for cross account hmm. so you have to do this as a homework Okay, so mention here. Okay, homework you have to complete it by tomorrow. And uh, yeah, that's it. So this brings to end to IAM module and to discuss the question interview questions. So let me open the. Yeah, AWS and questions. So these are the questions usually asked in the IAM. So they will ask like, what are uh, the IAM and its components and difference between policy and role? You should say, okay. So IAM and its components, you should start with the your root user, then IAM users, then IAM groups, policies, roles. what is aws manage policy what is custom policy and why we require mfa that is multi factor authentication what are its benefits so you should tell that okay and you should also explain what do you mean by root account versus iam account 
okay then you should say difference between console access and the programmatic access so this already we explored right programmatic access so this is nothing but a programmatic access you are accessing the using the command so you are listing something right so this is called programmatic access okay so for this programmatic access you can use the programmatic access user and his secret key and the uh, access key id and secret access key but it is not recommended for the security purpose okay so that is the reason we should not use the aws uh, this one mm, what do you say secret access key id and secret access key okay so it will be here so let me show you so go to users so click on terraform go inside so go to security credentials so this is what i meant access key id and secret access key so this is very very dangerous because this will be stored in your system as a plain text if somebody hacks it right so they can create anything in your aws account so that is why it is not recommended and we don't use this also okay so we make it a inactive and deactivate so we don't require this or you can delete also no issues for now i have deactivated it so no issues okay because someone can easily type by copying it right right and the next is yeah what are the components of a policy so you should explain the ear that is effect action and resource so you should explain that and coming to the activities you should say you have created im users based on client requirements and restrict users to groups or users by creating custom policies right then creation of role based on the scenarios so like i have explained two scenarios so there are other scenarios also right okay and set a password restrictions of the policy like while creating a user you can set a restriction policies like here so while creating user right let me go show you so while adding users So something I am doing here. So you can user must create a new password. You can restrict this kind of thing. Or another word is you can go to the settings here. Right? Account settings. And you can change the password policy here. Like that it should be 80 characters. So these are all some additional things. Like you might have seen that you know in some gmail or some other uh, providers they will ask you to create with alpha numeric so something kind so those are called the setter password policy okay so which is explained uh, here and yeah mithun can you show how to enable mfa for the tenant users the last yeah, video you did upload it yeah yeah i will upload today i will upload okay so it is same it is there is no difference between root and uh, this one just what you have to do go to the security credential and assign mfids that's it and the rest steps are same and give a name and click on virtual mfa say for example fgh continue and you will click on show qr code and uh, you have already installed the google authenticator uh, mobile application just scan it and enter the two codes uh, one after the other and then click on assign mfa so after this it will ask for mfa every time okay it is same there is no difference for uh, this iam users no this is for us right but uh, for the users which we create we can enable for them also yeah them also yes it's the same steps which you showed now Yes, yes. You are asking, you are telling about this user, right? Which we create using this add user, correct? Huh. Yeah, same. Okay, okay, okay. 
so this user also i have created using uh, this symbol because this i have created long back but that is it is showing yeah last class we created three users with a group name as developers so for them if you want to assign a mfa for them to log in we can just go to the security details and then enable the mfa That's yes the... yes 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 okay okay So you have to go to that particular users. Okay. So for example, I will uh, create one user simply say Bob and I'm giving password. I'm not giving anything auto generated password. Next permission. I'm not giving any permission. Okay. So I'm just selecting this and create user. So once I have created this user, right? So what you can do? So close this. So click inside. Go to security credential. Click on assign MFA. Give it a name. And continue. And show QR code. Scan from your Google Authenticator. It steps remains the same. There is no change. Okay, clear? Yes, Mr. Okay. Yeah, so that's it. And uh, coming to yeah, this password policy and provide roles for cross account access. So this I have already given you homework you have to do. And enable MFA for the all user access. So this is very, very mandatory. Okay, and please do it. If you are facing any changes, let me know. We can do this hands on tomorrow if you are not able to do it. Okay. Okay, Mithun. Okay, guys. Then that's it. Thank you. See you tomorrow.